worship you, we praise you, exalt you.
makes you know this thing. Thank you, God, for your presence. So thank you, God, for your worship. <coughs> oh, Lord, we thank you for the reality of it is all oh, is like our God reigns. Our God reigns. Father, help us, Lord God, that we've got to be humble before you, Lord God. And let us lay down ourselves <coughs> and the agenda, Father, Lord God. <coughs> Holy Spirit, yes, we know you're here when we arrive, but we need you this morning to minister, Lord God, and to teach us, Lord. Just release your gift upon us, Lord. Father, that love is so important to us because we know your love is so great. And Lord, we just love you and we love you because who else could have died at Calvary? Who else could have just had those rusty, hard <coughs> nails put into your hands that weren't small ones, they would be iron ones put in and on your feet, Lord, and you died. You died for us, Lord, and we're privileged, and I thank you this morning. Thank you for dying. employment 
and equality. It can lead people into health and happiness, into purpose and progress in life. Knowledge and education are vitally important to our lives. And I don't think here in the UK that we appreciate the importance of education because it's so readily available. We all have the opportunity to be freely educated up until the age of 16. If we live far away from the schools, we, the, the government or the school will provide transport to get us there. And it's free. We all have the opportunity for education until at least the age of 16. And then after that, we still have an opportunity to go to, to further education, to learn a skill, mm -hmm. to learn a career, to go on to a higher education, maybe on to university, if you so want that. Education is freely available, for the most part, in this country. We all have access to it in one form or another. And I think that really does at least to us not really fully appreciating the value of education. If you travel to some other countries in the world where education is not available, certainly not free or easily accessible, they have a far better appreciation on the value of education. Education, knowledge is power and it empowers. There are nations in the world today where people do not have access to education. And sometimes we just can't be bothered to turn up for school or college mm -hmm. or read a book mm -hmm. that is so freely available to us. There's a short video, it's only three minutes I want to, to watch. And I just hope through this video we understand the importance of opportunity and education. Let's watch the video. It's estimated that somebody escapes extreme poverty every 1.2 seconds. According to the World Bank, Anyone on less than $1.90 per day is living in extreme poverty, unable to afford basic food, clothing, healthcare and shelter. Absolute poverty rates have fallen faster in the past 30 years than in any other time on record. This is a remarkable achievement, but the task of taking people out of the worst poverty remains a huge challenge. The impressive fall is the result of changes in just two countries, China and India. In the 1980s, the majority of people in both of these countries were living in extreme poverty. But now the share of the poorest has fallen to 21% in India and less than 2% in China. Increased productivity in farms and a mass migration from poor rural areas to the booming cities enabled many Chinese and Indian people to better their lives. Asia is moving into a new phase, but can other parts of the world copy their model of moving people to factory jobs in cities? Today, more than half the world's poorest people live in sub-Saharan Africa. The percentage of the African population living in extreme poverty fell from 54% in 1990 to 41% in 2013. But in that same time period, the population of sub-Saharan Africa boomed, meaning the total number of poor people rose from 276 million to almost 400 million. The population of sub-Saharan Africa is predicted to reach 2 billion by 2050 and a large percentage of those people are likely to be extremely poor. And unlike Asia, a 
transformation of this region is unlikely to happen soon. Sub-Saharan Africa is urbanizing faster than any other place on Earth. But moving into the cities is not providing the same ladder out of poverty as it did in Asia. A lack of infrastructure, public transport and essential services in many African cities prevents poor people from finding jobs and getting an education. The rapidly growing population only makes matters worse by putting further strain on resources. Millions of poor people in sub-Saharan Africa live far below the World Bank's threshold of $1.90 per day. That means it will be harder to pull them out of extreme poverty. There are people that live like this in the world today. And we have no clue what it feels like. Absolute poverty. Mm. Nobody here looks starving. We're all well fed, some better well fed than others. <laughs> Aren't we lucky? <laughs> it's interesting to see how many people are nudging the people next to them. <laughs> we are a rich nation by comparison, rich in many ways, not the least because of the educational opportunities that we have. Many of these people, they, they can't. They can't have access to education. Children spend hours each day going back and forth with filthy water wells, which prevents them from going to school, and they can't afford school anyway. If you want to buy a Bible, what do you do? Open up your phone, have a look at Amazon, cycle to the Christian bookstore in Swansea. What's easy? Yeah? It's easy. But there are many people around the world that don't have that access. China has managed to lift the vast majority of its people out of poverty through opportunity and education. South Korea. I lived there for 11 years, now a very rich nation, not North Korea. It's the opposite. South Korea endured the Korean War in the 1950s. America helped it recover. It got on its knees, literally. The people of that nation literally got on their knees and prayed. Thousands of people would get together outside and pray, and they worked hard, and they educated themselves out of poverty. They educated and prayed themselves and worked themselves out of absolute poverty. And it's a booming country today. And they understand the value of education. The kids there in South Korea finish school the same time as ours. But then the parents send them to what they call hogwarts, which are educational institutes. And many kids spend most of their evenings still in these other alternative schools learning extracurricular things such as how to speak English, how to play instruments. That's why you go onto YouTube and you find kids who are four or five years old who are better than me on that keyboard. Four or five years old. Because they educate themselves. You see, in that country there's no NHS. Oh, so they don't have a pray. There's no kind of question, oh, are the gifts for today or not? There's no NHS, there's no benefit system. So unless they educate themselves and get a job and earn money, they're stuffed. It's like that in many countries around the world. You go to Swansea Bay University, the vast majority of the students are Asian. Good for them. We need to learn from them. Knowledge is power. And it empowers. So our first point today is this. Educate yourselves. Educate yourselves. Every year, we should start our year and say, 
say to God, okay, God, whatever your age, whatever your situation, God, what do you want to educate myself on this year? I've managed to kill um, a plant that Claire gave me in two weeks. Mm. Record! It's well done! Yeah. Sorry. I think I need to educate myself and do some gardening. Certainly a lack of knowledge there. But we all need to educate ourselves better. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 15 says this. The NLT version says, Intelligent people are always ready to learn. Their ears are open for knowledge. Always ready to learn and our ears are open for knowledge. Proverbs 16 verse 16 says this, How much better to get wisdom than gold, to get insight than silver. Did you know that the Bible places a high value on education and learning? On growing in wisdom and knowledge. And according to the Bible, gaining wisdom, gaining knowledge and insight and understanding in things is more valuable than getting rich. You can be rich or be really stupid. <laughs> Maybe you lose your riches as a result. In Proverbs chapter 1 from verse 1, we read these verses. The Proverbs of Solomon, King Solomon, son of David, King of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight, to receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteousness, justice and equity, to give prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the youth, let the wise hear and increase in learning. And the one who understands obtain guidance to understand the proverb and the saying, the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and fools despise wisdom and instruction. You don't know it all. I don't know it all. No matter how educated we are, the Bible declares that those who make the effort to grow in wisdom and learning are wise, and that those who don't are foolish. It's never too old to start learning and educating ourselves more and more. We've never arrived. We need to ask God, God, how do you want me to grow in learning this year? What do you want me to educate myself on this year? If you think that the mandate to stop learning finished when you left school, you were wrong. That's not what the Bible teaches. And so my first point this morning is this. Educate yourselves. My second point is this. Choose the best education. Choose the best education. There are many things we can educate ourselves in. A new career path, maybe. A new hobby, a sport, learning how to drive. International issues. That's an interesting one, and much needed. What God is doing all around the world. And these are all valuable. They are. But according to scripture, the most important education of all, the most important learning, is educating yourself in the knowledge of God and his word. Why? Because it has the power to carry us through life, bringing us much needed stability and strength. This is what Jesus taught. Let's have a look at Matthew chapter 7 from verse 24. 
in these verses, Jesus left us in no uncertain terms of what we need to base and ground our lives on. He said this, Therefore everyone who hears these words of mine, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, but it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rains came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house. But it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. Because he taught us one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. Storms come. Yeah? Anybody have experienced that? Mm. Yeah? Just a couple of us. <laughs> of course not. Definitely. We yeah. all experience storms. Jesus here is speaking metaphorically, of course. The house is our lives. And he's talking about the rains and the winds beating against us. They come. We know it. We've all lived through them. Mm. 